Hi everyone. I wanted to share today something which I think is just too big to miss, too amazing to miss. I've recently, um, well, a while ago, I got fascinated with uh, chatbots and artificial intelligence. And uh, while I was kind of using it for um, a lot of uh, blog work and YouTube work, I, I kept struggling with the fact that um, ChatGPT has been trained on global risk management resources. And if you followed any of my work, you would probably guess that most of the things out there named or called risk management is risk management one. So by no fault of ChatGPT, it has built this perception of what risk management is from all the marketing brochures and uh, um, kind of pop culture books on ERM, which have nothing to do with the actual decision science or probability theory. And so whenever you would ask ChatGPT about risk management, nine out of 10 times, it would actually respond incorrectly by using the flawed and misleading sources uh, written by risk management one people for risk management one people. So it would it, it would come up with kind of answers that you would expect a big four consultant to tell you at the conference, which you know are completely incorrect and useless if you're actually trying to implement it in in your in your company. Uh, so I kept struggling with that and I, and I always wanted to kind of I, I had this you know dream that what if, uh, I could train uh, the chatbot in everything that I've aggregated over the years in Risk Management 2 world. What if I trained it on my 1,000 articles and uh, 1,000 videos that I've recorded and the 200 workshops that um, different risk management and decision decision professionals from all over the world recorded for the risk awareness weeks over the last five years and the guides that risk academy published and the book that i wrote a few years ago which became the number one free downloaded risk management book in the world what if i can kind of put that together and somehow limit the references to risk management one what if i could have the risk management two bot that is limited to my kind of knowledge base, kind of a, an, a digital version of Alex that responds to risk management questions. And that's exactly what I did. I did just that. I found a software that allowed me to build a chatbot. It's called Risk Aware Academy Wisdom, raw Risk Academy Wisdom. And uh, Let's see uh, how well it responds. Uh, write in the comments as you're watching this. I'll come up with some, some questions that I think are kind of challenging and provocative, and uh, we'll see how it kind of uh, deals, de deals with that, how closely it can stay within the lanes that I've uh, uh, set out for the chatbot. Um, because from, from time to time, it breaks, and it kind of steers back into risk management one world. And you're going, well, uh, Alex would never say that. That's just that's just nonsense. Well, it, now you know, it's not me. It's sometimes the, the chatbot breaks. Because after all, um, I've used, as of now, 909 sources of information. And chatbot has millions, ch uh, ch chat GPT has millions and millions and millions of references. So the kind of this risk management one always overweights the risk management too, but we can see, let's see how closely it, it can stay. So you literally go to the Risk Academy blog and on every page, there's this uh, pop-up that you can talk to chatbot from any page, or there's a dedicated page called Introducing Raw, which is the Risk Academy Wisdom chatbot, Risk Academy AI chatbot. It's it's powered by ChatGPT, obviously. Um, let's see. Let's see uh, how well it responds. Well, what shall we ask? 
shall shall we ask it? And then there are some predetermined questions, that kind of you know, drafted questions to give you a hint as to what sort of things you can um, you, you can uh, talk about. So let's let's ask something simple. How do you identify risks? Let's see what it responds. Oh, in risk management two world, hmm, nice. Defining objectives, establishing, measuring, organization's decisions or project um, to, con to set up the context. So framing is very important. Yes, that's, that sounds very uh, familiar to what I would say. Identify existing assumptions. Oh, my God. This is, you can tell this is risk management too because it doesn't tell you. Um, brainstorm, do a brainstorming session with experts where you can um, identify threats. It says, well, if you got a decision in front of you, then you're bound to have some sort of decision model, whether it's a financial model or it's at least some sort of conceptual model in the decision make, uh, maker's head, then you can um, you can be sure that that decision is based on some sort of management assumptions. And identifying these assumptions is always the second step in identifying risks. So I think that kind of that that passes. That I think passes the uh, um, the little test. Let's see what else we can ask it. Um, how do you quantify quantify um, quantify water pollution risks? Now I haven't. I don't think I've written explicitly about that. Even though I do have a case. Um, Oh, I did share hmm, a case with uh, ChatGPT, so I think that's uh, that, that should be interesting. Uh, we used stochastic decision tree with Monte Carlo, which is in fact indeed what we did. Yes, 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 that's very interesting. I mean, it's not. It is. It is definitely sharing. I think the only example that I included in the teaching library, so it doesn't give you the full. A comprehensive answer, but this is at least like it's it's hinting in the right direction. It's pointing you in the right direction that um, quantifying water pollution risks is basically a decision tree or a bow tie with Monte Carlo sitting on top of it. And the local legislation actually usually provides the ranges for most of the consequences in the in the bow tie. So it's actually uh, quantifying water pollution risks is actually surprisingly surprisingly easy. What else shall we ask? Um, when is a Perth distribution useful in risk analysis? What is a Perth distribution? Well, it's one of the most common distributions that risk management to uh, people use in their lives. It's quite limited, so let's see what it says. Ooh, it's taking its time. This could mean that uh, there's an issue in the background with ChatGPT right this second. You know so how sometimes it falls off, and so it's uh, it's kind of stuck in connecting mode. And it's back. Um, write your questions in the comments below, and I'll do another video. Maybe I'll just include this in our kind of weekly or monthly webcast to a chance talk with Sam Savage. Um, include your questions and I follow up. I will follow up on them. OK, what does it say? Uh, is uncertain and expert opinions are available. Yes, that is indeed when you would use Perth distribution. Oh, it does talk about being bounded, which is, again, very, very important because many people apply, incorrectly apply Perth distributions to unbounded risks. Uh, and that significantly reduces your potential tail exposure. And then it describes what it is. Hmm, wonderful. Um, what else shall we ask? Which one is better, a decision tree or an influence diagram? It's a silly question because obviously um, 
neither one is better. It, it makes no sense. They're just two very good techniques used for risk analysis. Oh, nice. It's uh, good thinking. Good thinking by, chat, by chatbot. I mean, the level of intelligence is superior to most um, graduates and first year consultants in big four risk consulting firms. Um, I mean, this is kind of this is fascinating, uh, fascinating stuff. How do you use Monte Carlo with a decision tree? That could be a tough question because I definitely haven't written about that. Not bad. I mean, this is exactly how you would do it. Um, you would, you could uh, represent probabilities of the branches as frequencies or Bernoulli probabilities, and then you can represent the consequences on each of the nodes as distributions, whatever the distribution is, Weibull, log normal, or Perth, and um, you run a Monte Carlo uh, to see what the kind of what the aggregate uh, risk profile for that decision is. That's very that's very useful. What else shall we ask? What are alternatives to heat maps? I'm just going to use one of the pre-made uh, questions because I don't want to really make this video too long. Oh, thinking again, <laughs> that's, that's a difficult one because oh, everybody claims that uh, if only alternatives existed, then everybody would stop using heat maps because they're so flawed methodologically. Um, well, let's see what the chatbot says, because I know I've written an article about that explaining that there are actually more than a dozen alternatives, each one of which is better than a heat map. So let's see. Nice. Okay, well, this is, this is a good start. Um, hasn't given like the full 10 or so, or so uh, techniques that I've mentioned in my article, uh, but this is really, this is really, really good stuff. I've, um, I've spoken to the developers and I hope the next iteration, what we will do, it will actually list this answer and have a little link to the source where you can actually read the original article or watch the original video and see uh, what, uh, what the kind of, what the full answer is. Mm. I love this. This is the this is the question that I think I can destroy any um, a, a, any 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 chatbot because if you've re read any of my work, you know that I'm a big believer that ERM is an absolutely flawed, empty marketing concept. Now, ChatGPT has been trained that ERM is the savior of the world and is amazing. So we constantly clash in our uh, in our desire, me saying it's rubbish, forget about it, and ChatGPT saying it's you know, it's this framework. However, it is important to recognize that ERM has been criticized by some experts as a marketing term with no practical use. Yep, that's exactly what I said in one of the articles. Personal career may not be meaningful or effective. Yes. So in the kind of different parts of the organization. Well, the kind of the explanation is a little bit weak. There are uh, a lot more more concrete reasons why ERM is uh, is rubbish. Okay, what are the main barriers to effective risk management? Cognitive biases, sure. Organizational politics, sure. Self-serving, yes. Lack of transparency, yes, yes. I mean, it's it's all correct, but I, I feel I feel like there needs to be a, like a little bit more explanation. Although this is the longest uh, response that we've seen so far, can also. Uh, can also impact initiatives that have compelling interests and priorities. Yes, yes. Self-serving, lack of transparency can create mistrust and suspicion. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's not bad. I 
I, I went into a little bit more detail in the actual original article uh, as to what the barriers are and how to overcome them. Um, but that's uh, that's that's a good start. And let's kind of let's follow up. That's the beauty of um, working with chatbots is, and how do you overcome them? You, you're having a conversation right now. We kind of we've been playing. Um, we've been playing and asking unique, unrelated questions. Um, but we can actually have like an ongoing conversation. He says something, you respond, you clarify, and this is how you get the best value from the from the chatbot. You kind of you deep dive into the uh, into the issue. Okay, let's have a look what it's uh, written. Education, sure. Transparency, mm, yeah. I mean, yes, but this is this is a, this is a meaningless kind of point, like. Get you know, make sure everything is transparent and communicated well. I mean, sure. Let's make sure everybody is happy. It's 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 not particularly practical. Incentives and accountability. Um, align individual interests with the interests of the organization. Pr pr promote culture of accountability. I mean, again, as the title, absolutely correct. I have like an actual methodological story behind that in my mind. So I wish it would spell out a bit more the kind of the practicalities. For example, you literally need to change the way remuneration is calculated and uh, you need to link um, individual performance to kind of to some objectives or some metrics within the organization. Uh, but then you need to make the organizational metrics two dimensional. So it's not just volume uh, or cost, it's volume versus risk, cost versus risk. So like there's the whole story behind it. Um, so the, the kind of the answer is correct, but from here you wouldn't be able to grasp just the significance and the complexity of that uh, of that point. Integration into existing business processes. I mean, of course, that's like the biggest one. If you want people to start thinking about risks, make it inevitable. Change the way they they have to make decisions, and they they'll be forced to think about risks, even though sometimes they want to skip over or ignore. Um, continuous monitoring and evaluating. I mean, back testing, yes, um, but it's it's one of those kind of chat GPT things. Chat, you know, it's been probably trained on consulting brochures because it always like includes continuous improvement and monitoring at the end. Um, again, you know, we can we can do better. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this. This was uh, this was fun uh, for me, and I, I very much encourage you to visit Risk Academy blog. It's very easy to find. It's Risk Academy one word dot blog. And on every page, you can find the chat GPT, uh, ch yeah, raw uh, chat bot icon. You can click on it. You can have a chat. And uh, you, you should know that because it has been trained on all of my materials, um, you're pretty much kind of getting 80% of the answer that I would have given you. So you know, try that. And if that doesn't work, you can always reach out to me and ask me a question on LinkedIn. And or you can ask it in the comments below this video or below the, uh, the chatbot blog article. So thank you for your time. Enjoy. And I'll see you on this uh, in the next video. And don't forget to 